Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What did a teacher do that made you automatically gain respect for them? I had a professor that made it crystal clear that if we ever made an appointment and didn't show up, he'd take five points off of our final grade. I tried to find him during office hours and he wasn't available. I told him that I deserved an extra five points because he wasn't available when he said he would be and he gave it to me in the interest of fairness. People who stay true to their teachings are always great, provided that their teachings are moral. People who stay true to their teachings are always great. Sweet. I can do that. Provided that their teachings are moral. Damn it. There's always a catch, isn't there? In my first year of high school, my class decided to play a simple prank on our English forward slash so's teacher, by all laughing when he faced the board, and then stopping every time he turned around to face us. After a few minutes of this, he just left the classroom without a word. We all sat there, confused, until a few minutes later the assistant principal comes in and explains that we've really upset our teacher, he made us believe we'd seriously fucked up. Then our teacher walked in and pretty much went gacha. That son of a bitch had our respect from then on. The most baddest part of this is him managing to get the vice principal in on it as well. Clearly he had his boss's respect too. Mr. Halpert, hey, Vice Principal Scott, could you uh, give me a hand with something? Vice Principal Scott, of course Mr. Halpert, I'm a friend first, boss second. Probably entertain a third. I lay in bed that night and wept. A teenage boy who barely slept. But thought of how we made him feel. A thought that lacked the pure appeal. It had some meager hours before. When then I'd grinned with glee and more. To see his frowning face appear. A face that held such doubt and fear. And grief and gloom and pain and woe. With eyes that slowly turned below. I wiped away a single tear. He whispered Garcha in my ear. We did this with our physics teacher. We would agree on a key word and any time he said it we would clap or snap or something. He caught on pretty quick. This was about the same time that Mosquito Rigto became popular. It is essentially just a 15k Hz tone, but older people lose the ability to hear it. Many of us would play it at different times to irritate this one student. The teacher, who could not hear it but understood what was happening, set up some kind of microphone array that would indicate the direction of the source of the sound. That prank ended pretty quickly. Goddamn, that's a good teacher. Did he teach you guys about what he built? That's cool. My high school science teacher paused class to rip a student apart for bullying another student. Called it out as soon as it happened, I throat of everyone, and that bully never went near that other kid again. We'll always remember that. Actually that reminds me of something similar. My maths teacher in school was like the coolest guy ever. He was like 6, 4, mid-30s I guess and had at one point been the British judo champion, he'd also been used in a Batman video game. He told us they'd put those balls on him and a computer analyzed his movements, he was one of the bad guys I think. Anyway, he was cool as fuck, would always tell us great stories and never had to raise his voice as everyone respected the fuck out of him and wanted him to like them. Except for one time. It was a new term and a black student had left the school and he was telling us she had gone. One student pipes up with something along the lines of back to the J asterisk asterisk GLE where she belong. My teacher jumped to his feet and yelled get out. It was deafening and the whole class was in shock, we'd never even heard his voice loud let alone that. His instinctive anger and natural response to defend someone who wasn't even there was something I'll never forget. That's one of the moments in your life when you think, that's the sort of person I want to be. The kid left pretty sharpish. Afterwards the teacher sat down, said, I'm sorry you had to hear that, gave us some questions to work on and left the room. When they came back the kid looked like he had been crying. The teacher left the school the next year and was missed. When my year graduated he came back to give us our GCSE certificates. They couldn't have got a better guest of honor in my eyes. Edit, for anyone wondering, the game was on the original PlayStation in the IATs and yeah the bleep thing on jungle is probably unnecessary but it just didn't feel right typing a racist comment out. That s the teacher I want to be when I grow up. Too bad I am already 58, but I'll keep trying. Meanwhile my elementary school teacher blamed a bullied kid for being bullied.
Are we a meeting with my daughter's second grade teacher today because she's received racist bullying and I am hoping that the teacher understands the gravity of the situation and also has my daughter's back. Edit, for those in my inbox asking how racist kids can be, this is what two seven to eight year old girls said to my daughter, one of four non-white kids in the entire school. They didn't like how she looked different. They hated her braids and said she should have had her hair straightened instead. They were glad they were born white, and that they didn't look like that. Being white is better, in response to the previous statement. IMO, this is all absolutely racist and has no place in our society, and in our freaking elementary schools. A math teacher went to the hospital several times to visit a student who had been seriously injured in an accident. The teacher offered companionship, free tutoring, and genuine encouragement. I don't ever reply to posts. Just read. With that said, I had a drive as a kid that visited me in the hospital that was 50 or so miles out of his way when I broke my arm. I was flabbergasted when he walked in the room. We talked for over an hour. I still remember Dr. Adam to this day. He made me feel like more than a patient. That's a big deal. I had a bowel perforation about eight years ago, and the surgeon that saved my life did any number of great things, helped get my insurance to cover more, waived over $5,000 in co-insurance, visiting me in my GP's office, his wife, and billing it through her to avoid massive out-of-network fees, but the thing that stuck with me the most is when he saw my mom in the earth three years later. He was walking through the earth for whatever reason, noticed and immediately recognized my mother, and ran over to check on what he assumed was me. Turns out it was my sister this time around with her own bowel issues, so he looked at her chart, talked her through what they would be doing and why, and then took his leave. Drive. Kota, you are a fucking champion and have earned my lifelong friendship and respect. Edit to add, to clarify, drive. Kota did not falsify any insurance documentation regarding payments I would see his wife, my GP, for a normal visit with normal copay, and he would then come in after at no charge. He also fought a war with the insurance company to be able to perform my colostomy reversal as a continuation of care. Nothing but love for that man. Math teacher, I don't care if you have good grades or bad grades, if you work hard, I will work harder to make you pass. He worked hard for me, I passed. I had a sociology professor who gave us a do not fail checklist. Complete and you were guaranteed to pass. I also had a high school chemistry teacher who bet us all $100 that if we passed his class we would pass our first college chemistry class. He was just really awesome all around he told stories about traveling the world over breaks, got absurdly off topic to teach us random stuff, had a physics lab where we got to throw eggs at him, and a Cassioli we had a class where absolutely nothing got done because we were having a discussion. He used to give out quarters for correcting him, or for anything done really well. He put up posters about his trips and gave us extra credit quizzes about them because he said being observant was really important in chemistry. Actually there were a few really weird activities in that class I will never forget the time he ate chalk to prove to us that it was the same stuff as in milk. He was brilliant, hilarious, and just a really incredible human being. Edit, typo. Told us a joke about his name before we could, and allowed us to eat during his classes because kids your age can't help being hungry all the time, as long as we did it quietly. Great guy. His whole attitude made all of us actually pay attention and do our best. One of my teacher's name is Mrs. Kokea, yes pronounced like the drug, and made the first joke about it. I assume for detention she didn't give you lines. I had a teacher that liked liked to joke with his students a lot. Great guy. If you had an unusual name and he knew you were okay with it, he'd make a joke about it. Someone asked him one day why he never jokes about his name and he just goes cold-faced and says bluntly pedophilia isn't funny. His name is Mr. Pedo. English teacher in high school asked where my homework was. Responded I forgot to do it and he said to the rest of the class why can't you guys be like scratch underscore that underscore. He doesn't come up with some excuse he just tells me he didn't do it. Lol, I would always tell my teachers, I didn't finish it sounds a bit better than I didn't do it. Let me see what you did and I'll give you credit. Fuck. I moved out of home during high school. It was stressful, to say the least. I started to fall behind in assignments, I would be absent for days at time, I missed tests etc. I ended up explaining the bare minimum of my situation to my English teacher, and their response always stuck with me. 
Just do what you can. It may not seem like much, but right then and there, for 16-year-old kid who felt like simply living was a burden it was everything. I actually have stress dreams about this kind of thing, like I've been missing classes and falling behind for some reason, that feeling of dread is no good at all. Awesome of your teacher to understand. Second year of college and my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Hell of a ride. As a chick who never even boiled water before, somehow I was adjusting to manage everything at home, taking care of mom, taking care of my assignments and what fucking not. I used to get late almost daily. Completed assignments waking up all night which made me sleep in lectures the next day. One day I get called by this professor in her cabin. Was totally expecting to be grilled, but she hands me my assignment, I scored full marks, and says I don't have a daughter but if I had one I'd wish to have one just like you. I was all manned up, but fuck those onion cutting ninjas jumping in that cabin out of nowhere. 